Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and today I have a recipe for you. Um, now I uh, had mentioned that I was going to share a recipe uh, two weeks ago and then last week I was thinking the better of it and I kind of wanted to explain why. Um, so the recipe I'm going to share with you today is a curry dish or a curry inspired dish. Um, if you're not part of the knitting and fiber community, um, you may not be aware that there was a blog post at the uh, beginning of January that sparked a conversation about cultural, cultural appropriation and racism in uh, knitting and other craft. And that particular blog post was written from the point of view of a white woman who was planning a trip to India. Um, those have all been really good conversations and, you know, I, I can post more information down in the, the comments or the show notes if you want to find out more. Um, but having read a lot of the comments and just being trying to pay attention to that conversation did give me pause as a white woman <laughs> to share with you I, something related to Indian cooking. Um, I think a lot of this uh, hesitation on my part is just to, it, it's like a double check. Um, whenever we see people getting called out for something, we want to make sure that we're not doing that same bad behavior. And so I was hesitant um, to share this with you, but my intent is not to pass myself off as anything other than a person who likes this kind of food. I'm certainly not an authority on it. I'm not saying that this recipe is in any way um, more, more or less authentic than anything else. Um, I just want to share this recipe with you all. So I also don't want to otherize uh, Indian cuisine or make it sound, you know, exotic or new or, ooh, look at me, I'm doing this thing. Um, it's, it's not about that. It's just about, I like food. I like trying different foods. Um, so I, I hope that comes across. Um, but, um, do feel free to call me out if you have any concerns about this video or anything else that I have shared in the past or may share in the future. Um, so like I said, this is an Indian curry dish. Um, it's a pretty simplified um curry based on other curries that I've made in the past. So um, one of the great things about Indian food in particular is that there's often multiple levels and layers of uh, complex flavors. And to achieve that, often you have quite a few steps, quite a few ingredients. And um, depending on the dish, it can be quite a few hours of cook prep and cooking time, um, which is absolutely worth it if you have the time. I often don't have the time and so I do look for kind of workarounds and shortcuts. So this particular recipe was one I asked a friend of mine, he likes to cook um, all different kinds of food, and he sent me this recipe and then I modified it a little bit. Um, and I tried it a few weeks ago and it did not turn out well and I'll tell you why. And then I tried it again this past week and it turned out much better. So I thought, okay, this is something that I can uh, pass on to you and know that it's going to be a nice meal. Um, so it's, it's very uh, simple, like I said. Um, you start with onions, garlic, and ginger, and saute those in the cooking fat of your preference. Um, you might use ghee, you might use uh, any kind of cooking oil, canola oil I think is what I used. Um, you could use olive oil. What do you, whatever cooking fat you normally like to cook with. Um, and then you want to warm up your spices to release their flavor. Um, now the best way to cook with any kind of spices is to use whole spices and toast them over a low heat. That helps activate and release the oils and bring out their flavor and then add them into the dish. Again, short on time. So one of those um, time-saving steps, of course, is to use some kind of a spice mix. Um, and these are from Penzi Spices. This is a, a garam masala. 
um, and you can see it has a nice uh, a dark color. This one is not particularly uh, hot spicy. I don't think it has any hot peppers in it. It has a little bit of tel uh, tel black pepper, but it does not have any cayenne. So I used some of this, and then I also used this hot curry powder, um, which says it is Madras style curry. Again, not making any claims about authenticity or whatnot. Um, I just know that these um, spices from this company, Penzi Spices, are really fresh whenever I order them, and they retain their flavor well. Um, and so they're a good, you know, shortcut substitute if you want something that's just ready to sprinkle into your dish. Um, I can recommend them. So I used a blend of these. I used more of the hot curry powder than I used the garam masala, but you could play with the ratios, and if you don't like atomically fire, fiery food, well, I shouldn't say that. This is not atomically fiery. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, um, but I was able to put in at least a tablespoon for this dish, and you know it was not blow your head off hot. Um, but if you like it less spicy, then you could put use more of the garam masala or another curry type blend um, that doesn't have as much hot pepper in it. So once you have sauteed your on onions, garlic, and ginger for a few minutes and the um, onions are starting to turn clear, that's when I would add the spices um, to kind of warm them up. And if you're using whole spices, um, you're gonna grind them uh, to a very fine powder um, before you add them to this dish at this point. Um, from there, you're going to add, um, I like to add a green vegetable, and this was my augmentation of my friend's uh, suggested recipe because his did not have any kind of greenery or vegetables in it. Um, I like, you know, one pot meals or one, di or one skillet meals um, and so that you don't have to make like an extra side dish. So I threw in some snow peas. Um, and then I put in some uh, pre-cooked chicken. Um, this was from a roast chicken I had made a few days earlier, leftover meat from that. Um, a little bit of uh, broth, and I just used a vegetable bouillon cube this time with some hot water. I dissolved that down, added the broth, salted to taste, and um, let that simmer and, and uh, the, the snow peas cook just a little bit. I wanted them to still be crunchy. Um, and warm the chicken through. And then at the very end, turned off the heat and added a couple of generous dollops of plain yogurt. Um, and that adds you know, another depth of flavor. It makes the, the sauce um, kind of come together and become creamy and very nice. And um, it adds a sourness, um, which uh, I have a new appreciation for, for sour things after watching the series Salt acid, fat, and heat, um, which I will also link in the show notes. Uh, that's available on Netflix and maybe available through other services, but it talks about the different components that help bring out flavor in your food. And so um, I think Western palates tend to focus on sweet and salty and not so much on sour and bitter. So that's something that I'm trying to cultivate in my own palate is reappreciating those flavors. So adding the yogurt and um, you could even add a squeeze of lime as well, just to kind of brighten the dish up and perk up all the other flavors. Um, but this was very good. Uh, the first time we had it, uh, I served it with naan bread, um, which is a traditional Indian flatbread. Uh, I was able to get that in my local supermarket. They do have a brand that is um, cooked in a clay oven, which is the traditional cooking method. And um, it, it toasts uh, well. I just like to heat it up in my little toaster oven in it, and it, um, it's very nice. And then um, the other, the second week, um, I didn't have any bread, and so I just used rice and served the curry over rice. Um, now, I did mention that the first time I had made this, it didn't turn out as well. And the reason for that was the way that I had cooked the chicken. So I hadn't um, pre-cooked the chicken the first time I tried to make this. I went with my friend's recommendation of marinating the chicken in the, spi the spice mixture uh, with some yogurt. And I can understand why um, 
pre-marinating your chicken in a in a fermented dairy product would work. Um, it's the same concept as using a buttermilk um, marinade for fried chicken. The enzymes um, that are formed in that fermented dairy product will help break down um, the meat and tenderize it and um, give it more flavor. So I think that's a good cooking method or a good prep method, um, especially for something like chicken. My problem was that I then took that marinated chicken and I cooked it in an open vessel in a hot oven and I actually kind of burned the marinade. I didn't completely burn it, but um, it was almost to that point. It was a little bit carbonized. It was starting to get burnt around the edges. Um, and it also kind of split and dried out the sauce. Um, so I think if I were going to cook it in the oven again, what I would do is um, still pre-marinate it in the yogurt, but I would cover it and I would cook it at a lower temperature. I think I was trying to cook it at like 375 Fahrenheit or something like that. Um, I would actually cook it down at like 300 degrees, um, which would mean a long cooking time, a long slow cooking time, covering it, even sort of braising it, maybe even adding a little bit of broth or water um, while it's cooking just to keep the sauce um, a nice consistency, keep it from drying out and burning. So that's my one tip. Um, I had never, I don't think I'd ever put a yogurt covered item into the oven before. So I just, I wasn't thinking that through. Um, but uh, it did taste fine. Um, it just didn't look that great. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's my tip. And again, if you're looking for this to be like a quick weeknight um, meal, if you have leftover chicken, that not only cuts down on your prep time, but it also means that you're not dealing with this um, overcooking sauce splitting issue that I had. So um, you can just add the yogurt at the very end if your chicken is pre-cooked. And that still imparts all the nice flavors of the yogurt and makes the sauce nice and creamy. Um, I want to also say that um, I encourage you to explore different cuisines and different kinds of cooking methods. Um, I certainly like to do that in my own cooking. I get bored making the same things over and over. It's very easy to fall into a rut when you find a, a recipe that does work. Um, we tend to, to kind of do that and then I'll get fed up and I'll you know go to my cookbooks or go on the internet and find other things. Um, one great source that Rick and I found recently um, is a couple of professional chefs out of Scotland. They're called the Amazing Spice Men. Um, they come from an Indian heritage and they their um, mission, if you will, is to impart more flavor and more spice into traditional dishes from Scotland, England, and Wales. And that's what their cooking series and series of recipes is. So it's things like fish and chips with more spices or um, a, what did I make? It was a bread pudding with a cardamom custard. Um, just adding more levels of flavor to these traditional dishes to, um, to change them up and to try something new. And uh, that series is available for free on YouTube. And so I will uh, put a link um, down below for that and also all of the recipes even if you can't watch the YouTube videos for whatever reason All of the recipes are also available online so you can uh, get them there If you have any tips um, for cooking Indian style dishes or any other types of cuisine that you want to share or You know a new favorite recipe that you've come across um, Please do let us know. I'd love to try new things and you can leave a comment below as well So thanks again for joining me uh, happy cooking and delicious eating and have a great week.